Hey guys, welcome to Lake Charles, Louisiana, which is in southwest Louisiana, in this beautiful cemetery I'm at today. And do you guys remember the Marlboro Man? Well, what most of you probably don't realize is that there were multiple Marlboro Men, dozens of them in fact, and print ads and videos or commercials and all that. So one of the most notable ones, probably arguably the most famous Marlboro Man is buried right here in Lake Charles, Louisiana which is in Southwest Louisiana. And his story is pretty unique because he was not only a model and an actor and a rodeo man, he was also the Marlboro Man, known to many. He was, like I said, one of the multiple Marlboro Men. And he was mostly in print. I think he was only in print, meaning that if any of you from the 70s or maybe early 80s opened up a magazine and saw a Marlboro ad, he was probably the one that you saw. Amongst others, but he was very, very famous and most likely the most widely known one or recognized one because of his acting roles outside of that and uh, on some pretty notable TV shows. And also, what's uh, what I like about this story about the man that I'm about to tell you guys about is his crusade against smoking once he found out, ironically, that he was dying from lung cancer in the late 80s. And he campaigned against tobacco and smoking and all that and actually, you know, campaigned against and met up with uh, very huge namely Philip Morris, uh, tobacco companies uh, that, you know, their advertising is selling cigarettes and selling things that are killing people. So very interesting story. I hope you enjoy it. Let's go ahead and jump right in without wasting any more of your time. I'll, I'll, I'll show you more of this beautiful cemetery on the way out. But for now, I'm going to tell you the story about Mr. Lawrence Gilbert McLaren or his stage name was Wayne McLaren. Let's go ahead and jump right in, guys. Hope you enjoy. Let's go. So situated, if you drive in the front, I'm facing the, okay, so that's the front of the cemetery that when you drive in, way over there, you see that building, way over there, I'll try to focus in on it, where you drive in at, right over there, you can see it, and you drive in, you turn right, and you come all the way to the back right corner, and uh, you follow the road around here, and you'll start seeing this elevated area right here on the other side of the road from me right here, where this pavilion is and this green tent, it's kind of elevated about four feet above the ground. Well, basically as soon as you get to, I'd say that little driveway area right there, you know, you, you if you see that driveway right there and that green trash can, and right over here is, and you'll find Mr. Lawrence Gilbert McLaren Jr., better known as Wayne McLaren, the actor, the rodeo man, and probably most famous as the, or one of the, Marlboro Men. And his mother is buried right next to him, Miss Louise McLaren, and his father, Mr. Lawrence Gilbert McLaren Sr., right next to them. So, nice family. Uh, he was born in Galveston, Texas, September 12, 1940, and he died in uh, the Los Angeles area, uh, area on July 22nd of 92, after a battle with lung cancer. Uh, he was buried here, obviously, in Lake Charles, Louisiana, and has a pretty pretty interesting story. Now, what I never knew, because I, I was born in 1980, so I remember plenty of, you know, plenty of my childhood, plenty of tobacco advertisements on commercials, you know, magazines, sporting events, all that stuff. It was a big deal. And for the younger folks watching this channel, it hasn't been that long now since you, you don't really see... Um, tobacco ads on commercials anymore because of you know they just they regulated it to, and they took them out of there they took commercials cigarette commercials out of tv now i think you can only see them now in magazines now i believe and you don't see them at sporting events anymore either um and such and such so all that was because of years of ongoing debate dating back to the probably the, the late 50s early 60s um, if any of you guys watch Mad Men, the TV show, which I highly recommend, it's amazing. And it's about an advertising firm, and their biggest client is Lucky Strike. And there are episodes where, you know, they, they highlight the fact that Lucky Strike is their biggest client for the advertising agency where they work at Sterling Cooper. And how there, were, there was research and, and findings and all these, you know, all these things coming out saying how smoking was bad. Now, back then, it's about 50, 60 years ago, or 60, 70 years ago, um, 
the general public, most people smoked. Doctors recommended cigarettes to stressed out housewives and uh, pregnant women. Doctors used to smoke in their offices. It was widely accepted that cigarettes don't cause cancer. But what a lot of people didn't realize back then is that there was research done back then and it showed that people were dying of cancer from smoking cigarettes. And the, I say they, the general public, especially the tobacco companies were trying to sweep this under the rug. Nobody wanted to believe it. Cigarette and tobacco sales were too huge. They were gigantic. It was one of the biggest commodities out there. And so it was an ongoing thing for years and years and years. And it was widely ignored and also widely accepted by the opposite side of the spectrum that cigarettes are fine and they weren't causing cancer. And if you died of cancer, it was just something genetic or it was caused by something else. And so fast forward to the 1970s, around 1975, when Mr. Wayne McLaren here basically got started. Uh, so he, he gained notoriety in 1975 as the Marlboro Man at the time. There were one, he was one of several dozens that were in print. I say in print that he was a Marlboro Man in magazines. Uh, there were commercials too, which were other guys. Uh, but Mr. McLaren was known mostly for his print works. So if you picked up a magazine in the 70s and maybe early 80s, you most likely saw his face. Um, actually, one year before he died, like I mentioned earlier, he, he pleaded with Philip Morris, which is the, the, the tobacco giant um, at the time, to limit their advertising. This is probably one of the first pushes to limit their advertising, like I mentioned a while ago. Um, because, you know, kids were seeing these. See, kids were seeing these cool guys on horseback and looking rugged and looking cool. And like I said, they're not even breaking a sweat. They're just looking cool and just managing. And they light up a cigarette and it just relaxed. And, you know, that's, that's marketing right there. Genius marketing, because it looked good. And Mr. McLaren, later in his life, the last couple of years of his life, when he, dis when he discovered that he was dying from lung, lung cancer, ironically, that he wanted to campaign against it and meet with these companies and he pleaded with Philip Morris just to limit their advertising just to limit it didn't even ask him to cut it out just ask him to limit it and that movement I guess which over the next 20 years pretty much succeeded you know people uh, saw less or no advertising for tobacco on TV anymore uh, you still you still see alcohol all the time but not tobacco and you also don't as far as I know you don't see tobacco on sporting events uh arenas and stuff and not all that anymore uh one of the most famous at you know sports photographs of all time which is michael jordan in the 88 i think it's the 88 dunk competition uh where he's dunking he's dunking from the free throw line and if you look at the view there's a, a couple of different views there's a side view which is pretty famous and there's also like the view from down in front of him uh like underneath the basketball goal looking up and you can see the big scoreboard, the hanging scoreboard in the center of the arena. And right there in plain sight is a Winston advertisement, Winston cigarettes. And ironically, not only did Mr. McLaren, who's the Marlboro man, uh, the Winston man, and also the Lucky Strike Girl, all three of them, all, all of them died, maybe more, uh, from tobacco use, from lung cancer and such, or complications from it. So it was definitely a thing, you know. Um, so uh, Mr. Wayne, he also made public appearances to warn kids. Um, he spoke before Massachusetts legis legislature and appeared in British Broadcasting Corporation uh, production called the, the Tobacco Wars, which was a thing back then. Um, and he found out he had lung cancer in 1990. Uh, and actually, he got... Uh, physical done in like around eight, 1988, about two years before he discovered he had the cancer. And uh, the doctor who gave him the physical or whatever didn't find it, didn't discover it. So he actually sued that doctor in 1990 for not catching it during that physical. And uh, he campaigned against it. When he found out he had lung cancer, he just kind of, you know, used his remaining strength or the last, before he got really bad off, he started campaigning against it and all that. And so probably did a lot of good like i said it was probably the first push the last the last push of a movement that it started probably you know uh years before that something that dates back you know that was a, a troublesome issue dating back to the 
late 50s, early 60s. Highly recommend Mad Men, by the way. If you guys haven't watched that show, it's amazing. Great show. It won all kinds of awards, but I love it just because of the way it's made and the era, uh, the timepiece that it is. Very notable TV show, in, in, indeed. Uh, sometimes when you visit a celebrity grave, you can tell which one is, is the celebrity grave because it has the most stuff on it. But Mr. McLaren's here is very, it's just there's nothing on it. His mother has a pretty yellow rose or flower in her uh, flower flower holder right there, but very subtle. And a week before he was dying, um, you, you know, he, he was quoted as saying, you know, still campaigning against the smoking and all that stuff. In fact, uh, he was quoted as saying, you know, 25 years of smoking a pack and a half of cigarettes a day, it finally caught up with me. And I spent the last month of my life in an incubator. And it's definitely not worth it. That's a quote from uh, Mr. Wayne McLaren just a week before he died. Still campaigning against it. And he was uh, his mother, Miss Louise, here. Rest her soul, rest in peace. Uh, she was quoted as saying he was very strong minded, very strong minded man. When he set his mind to campaign against that, against the smoking and all that, that he was, he meant it. And uh, it was quite the humanitarian about it. He cared about the kids the most. He, he didn't want kids that were seeing those ads to want to smoke, to see that, you know, to, to, he saw the marketing that cigarettes were doing and these tobacco companies were doing and they're making it look so appealing, like all marketing does. And he just, he said, you know, if I could just save one child's life or one kid's life by not smoking or, you know, not picking up smoking and dying from lung cancer and all that, then maybe I could save two of them or three of them and all that stuff. So, uh, so he was really hard set on it. But dating back, you know, it, where he got his start at, you know, kind of his Hollywood career, uh, he, he worked in rodeo as a stunt man. He was a bronc rider. He did bull events. And uh, then he was hired, I guess he got seen from that. I guess Marlboro was looking for that look. You know, of course they were, because that's all the ads you saw. Like rugged roadie, you know, cattleman, rancher men, uh, horseback, smoking cigarettes, and just making, you know, making it look super cool. I've always thought it looked cool. I still think it looks cool. Uh, and so they picked him up and he became one of those Marlboro men. Uh, Philip Morris actually denied that he was a Marlboro man. Uh, once he came out and said that he was dying from lung cancer from smoking philip morris you know obviously <laughs> marlboro themselves aren't that's like shooting yourselves in the foot saying like oh man they're going our very own you know our own spokesperson essentially at the time or one of the many spokespersons people are dying from our own product and that was the whole thing dating back to the 50s and 60s is that you know there were these research coming out research coming out saying that tobacco was killing people and is bad for you and it cancer causing and then the people who, not only just the tobacco companies, but the, the companies and people who benefited from the tobacco sales were out there saying, no, it's not, it's fine, you know. Probably a lot of that goes on today with different products still, you know, too, which is, you know, luckily FDA and all that regulates a lot harder than it used to. And that's good, that's the silver lining of it all, but I'm sure it still goes on today with lots of products, the politics of it all. And so, uh, but he actually got with his talent agency Mr. McLaren did and produced uh, an affidavit from the talent agency and he actually found and produced a check stub from Philip Morris paying him for his work uh, for those years of work um, or during those years of work so he kind of proved his point or proved that he was definitely the Marlboro man or one of them and so uh, just before his death his, his brother did a voiceover at his bedside uh and he was saying how, you know, he was campaigning for his brother, kind of carrying on, you know, pushing the, his death, his brother's on his deathbed, Mr. McLaren's on his deathbed, and his brother is basically putting it out there that, you know, these cigarette companies, they put it out there like, oh, that, you know, live this independent lifestyle, this cool independent lifestyle, and smoke cigarettes, and you'll be, you'll be free and cool and all that stuff. And so he pointed out on the voiceover that, you know, look at my brother, he's on his deathbed, with all these tubes tied to him and inside of him, he's like, he's not very independent right now, is he? And so uh, that was one of the last campaigns against it while Mr. McLaren was still alive in his last living days. Um, so 
very sad ending. You know, you see people in that situation. But uh, on a lighter note, you know, Mr. McLaren in his acting days, dating back to the, the late 60s, and uh, like I said, he started in rodeo and all that, and then he became Marlboro Man, and probably around the same time, a little bit before, a few years before his um, time as the Marlboro Man, he was in acting. And uh, in fact, his acting days butt up right up against, or go all up, you know, up, up until his Marlboro days. So around 1969, he was in Painter Wagon, and that was a pretty famous one. I know you guys probably remember that show. He was a stuntman, at, he was a miner. He played a role like an extra, or like a miner, a random miner uh, doing some mining, but he's like a stuntman, stuntman miner. And uh, 1972, he was on The Honkers, if any of you guys remember that. I don't remember that show, but uh, sounds cool. Sounds like a good country western show or something, I don't know. Uh, he was in Junior uh, Bonner, and another show called, or movie called Cry For Me Billy. Uh, 1968, he was actually in a Mission, in, in a Mission Impossible episode, uh, or movie. And uh, 1969, he was on The Mod Squad, which is pretty awesome, pretty big show. Uh, 1971, he was on a show called The FBI. And check these out, his last two roles in 1973, he was in Canon. I like that show, it still comes on, you can watch it on MeTV. And uh, in 1973, one of my current favorite TV shows that I'm actually watching right now on Roku uh, is Gunsmoke, Matt Dillon. I love that show. I love Gunsmoke. I just think it's cool to watch. I think it's very, it's very westerny and uh, always got a good plot. And I like Matt Dillon. He's just a good, he's a good guy. Uh, he's a good lead man for that role as a sheriff. And so, uh, so after that, you know, he did those cool acting roles, and then he became a Marlboro Man and did that for years. And then uh, found out in 1990 he had lung cancer and that he was, um, he decided he was going to go out on the road and campaign against tobacco use. My truck right there. Always has a cameo in my videos, doesn't he? And uh, so I wanted to come and visit this guy today, this man, this man of goodwill and uh he, did, he could have used a celebrity to not do all that campaigning against uh the tobacco use and all that like he did he could have easily just used a celebrity to retire rich and and just you know ride the wave and just be like cool i'm the marlboro man and i'm gonna smoke till i die and you know be hard-headed about it but instead he became the humanitarian that he is or say became he used uh, his humanitarianism to uh for the better and he's looking out for the young the youth the younger ones out there who were seeing the ads that he put out there and was wanting to tell people like look these things are killing people in fact one of the commercials uh you could probably look it up on youtube and uh, it's a video of him once he found he, he has cancer at that point and he's doing his campaigning and he's saying you know anybody with an iq of a hamster can easily see how these things are killing people and, uh, you know, it's, he's not wrong. And so, um, just a very interesting man, very interesting career. I mean, how many people can you name that were Marlboro men, you know? I didn't even know one was buried here in Louisiana, let alone only, you know, in barely not even an hour away from my house. And so, um, I just thought that was really cool. Really cool. Not cool in the sense that he's promoting tobacco use and cigarette, but just the Marlboro Man is cool, regardless, you know. And uh, everybody knows about the Marlboro Man. Everybody knows that term. You know, you're talking about Marlboro Man. You can, you all picture the same thing. You're picturing, you know, <laughs> cowboy hat and a guy looking cool, just rugged. Not sweating life, not sweating anything. Just managing and on top of everything, you know. And, uh... So, if you guys want to come visit Mr. McLaren yourself, it is in Highland Memory Gardens. I'm standing here, I'm walking in front of the mausoleum portion of it in the very back. And uh, you can see here, it's pretty nice. It's in Lake Charles, Louisiana, you can look it up. You can just look up Mr. McLaren's name and it'll give you the, the cemetery where he's buried at. And, you know, I just showed you how to get to his grave there. And, uh, it's a very, very beautiful place. It's very nice. And um, I hope you enjoyed it. A little quick visit. Another celebrity grave. 
I uh, try to be very respectful with these and, you know, focus on what they did in life and the positives they've done and all that stuff and their, their impact on the world, so to say, if you want to say that, and, uh, and what good they've done. And uh, with that, I'll go ahead and sign off. I hope it wasn't too windy for you guys. And uh, have a wonderful Saturday. It's May 6th, the 6th de Mayo. How do you say 6th in Spanish? I forgot. And uh, I'm enjoying it. It's beautiful out today. So I'll see you on the next one. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video or any of my videos. Feel free to go to my Patreon page, uh, patreon.com slash travel without a cause. And uh, you can also go to Instagram. Uh, I'm working on posting more on Instagram. Um, just trying to find the time to leverage my time between all the social media and all that. So uh, I'll go ahead and hang up now. And you guys have a wonderful day. And I'll see you on the next one, whenever that may be. And uh, I'll take care. Bye, folks.